asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. Shall we jump straight in to the old headlines then? Let's jump into the headlines then. You heard Catherine Drew there a couple of minutes ago saying that Yulia Skripal has released a statement. She's the daughter of double agent Sergei Skripal, who's been in hospital along with her father since they were allegedly poisoned a month ago. She's released her first statement. Now remember, exactly one week ago to the day, we were told that Yulia was up and talking and had recovered fairly rapidly. Sky News reporting on this, the one and only... Kay Burley. Very good afternoon. Ulie Skripal says she is getting stronger every day, despite what's been seen as a somewhat disorientating, disorientating episode, according to her. Her first statement since being poisoned was released as the Russian ambassador demanded that the Foreign Office grant officials access to Ulia. The government said they'd had it passed on, but added that so far she has decided not to take up the offer. Here's a statement from Ulia released by police. She says, I woke up over a week ago now and I'm glad to say my strength is growing daily. I'm grateful for the interest in me and for the many messages of goodwill that I have received. I've many to thank for my recovery and would especially like to mention the people of Salisbury that came to my aid when my father and I were incapacitated. Further than that, I would like to thank the staff at Salisbury District Hospital for their care and professionalism. I am sure you appreciate that the entire episode is somewhat disorientating and I hope that you'll respect my privacy and that of my family during the period of my convalescence. So that was the statement from Yulia Skripal. Now it's interesting that it has been alleged that Yulia was told that the Russian embassy wanted to visit but that she refused. Now you don't have to be Alfred Einstein. <laughs> You don't have to be Albert Einstein or Lieutenant Colombo to realise or to suspect or to even suggest that the the UK authorities have probably told Yulia, we believe it was the Russians, the Russian government. That being so, why would she agree to speaking with them? Now, earlier today, Russian television aired a recording of an alleged phone conversation between Mrs. Skripal and her cousin Victoria. This has caused much merriment online and on social media because doubts have been cast on whether or not the phone call is authentic. Now, the presenters of the Russian TV programme themselves said they hadn't been able to verify it, but maybe it is genuine. Maybe it is. The recording is supposed to be between Yulia and Victoria, who still, or who does live in Russia, the woman supposedly, uh, Yulia supposedly says, everything is okay, my father is resting now, having a sleep, everyone's health is fine, there's nothing that can't be put right, I will be discharged soon, everything is okay. This story, I tell you, I spent so much time over the last few years talking about serial dramas and how 24-hour news channels have replaced your afternoon soap operas. Well, this is a perfect example. Anyway, Russian ambassador to the UK is Alexander Yakovenko, and he addressed the media again today. This guy's turning into a bit of a star. He wanted to take issue with tweets posted by UK Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson yesterday. Have a listen. The Russian ambassador to the UK dissects a tweet that was posted by Boris Johnson, and he does it with, with aplomb. Here he is, the Russian ambassador. I would like just to make a few comments on the Secretary Johnson's tweet yesterday. And uh, uh, because, and I'm quoting him, I mean, quoting the Twitter by Boris Johnson. Porton Down identified nerve agent as military great Novichok. So this is the statement. Okay, but we want to check it. For the time being, one month, UK is refusing to give us samples. Hope it will be checked by the OPCW, but we want these results transparent for everybody. So it's up to the United Kingdom 
to give consent whether it will be allowed everybody to know the results of that investigation or not. Second, Boris Johnson. Russia has investigated delivering nerve agents likely for assassination and as part of this program has produced and stockpiled small quantities of novichoks. I like the word likely. I like the word highly likely. Uh, maybe it's clever, but what I want to say that uh, so first of all, it's not true. This is first. And uh, that, let's say, statement is not supported by any evidence. Number three. Russia has motive for targeting Sergei Skripal. It's not true. Absolutely not true. And uh, we hear all the, let's say, stories and the uh, some kind of theories about our motivations. We don't buy it. Just for us, this kind of statements are unacceptable. Good stuff from the Russian ambassador. What was interesting today, listening to BBC Radio, National Radio as well, and watching the channels as I do, very little today about the whopper of a lie that Boris Johnson was exposed as having told yesterday. You'll know by now that Aitkenhead, uh, Gary Aitkenhead, the chief executive of the Port and Down facility, basically contradicted a claim by Johnson that Johnson made on German television a couple of years ago. Johnson's, excuse me, excuse me, a couple of weeks ago. Johnson said, look, I know that it originated in Russia because I was told categorically by Portin Down that it did. But of course, that's been contradicted. A number of well-known politicos and commentators have said Johnson should resign. But there hasn't been very much about Johnson today. This is your media, I suppose. Now, later this afternoon, the geopolitical analyst Neil Clark spoke to RT and he spoke to RT about Yulia Skripal's statement and also why he believes the UK-Russia-did-it story is falling apart. Neil Clark, first of all, suggests that Yulia Skripal will come under pressure in terms of what she can and what she cannot say, Neil Clark. I'm sure there'll be pressure on her what to say, Colin. I mean, just a week ago, I remember reading in the British papers that she was on death's door and the fact that the, the life support machine was going to be switched off. And now she's made this Lazarus star recovery, which is extremely welcome, of course. But the problem the British government has got now is their, is their narrative is totally unravelling day by day, hour by hour. We already had this week the announcement from Port and Down that they couldn't confirm that the nerve agent the government said was used actually came from Russia. And then we had the sort of backpedalling on that one uh, from the likes of Boris Johnson and co. And now we hear that Yulia Skripal is, is, is up there, she's talking, she's re recovering well. And so, you know, if this was Novichok, which we're told, we, were, we were told before, don't forget, is the deadliest nerve agent known to man, it would kill you within two minutes, probably. Uh, how has she recovered? And so there's a lot of questions to be asked here. And then, of course, we're now being told that the Novichok was probably on the door handle of the mm. Scripples house. But if that was the case, then how come they were able to walk around Salisbury, have a meal, go out for a drive for the next five hours? So this really, this narrative really has got more holes in it than a large slab of Swiss cheese, hasn't it? And uh, it's hard to see where the government can go from here, really, because, you know, everything they told us in the beginning has so far been contradicted. Yeah, there's an old glam rock song from the 1980s called Falling Apart at the Seams. You might be old enough to remember Cinderella. It is falling apart, it seems, because it was monumental bollocks from day one, of course. You know, as he pointed out there, did they get it in the graveyard? Did they get it when they were out having lunch? Was it in the house? Was it on the front door? It's just rubbish. The whole story is rubbish. And I understand why people are asking the question, can we even trust that the Skripals were in fact poisoned by some sort of nerve agent at all? More on this now in a couple of minutes with Michael Shrimpton. It's 15 minutes past the hour on Thursday's programme. Loads of tweets on this. We will get to the tweets, of course. Just a word on the German anti-Semitism story, because I will be speaking 
with Kevin Barrett. I will be talking about this with Kevin Barrett a bit later on. If you want to read the story, go excuse me, if you want to read the story, go to richieallen.co.uk. Rainer Went or Rainer Vent heads up the second biggest police union in Germany. And he's been he has been saying that if people are anti Semitic, their children should be taken away from them. And this is true, this. He said that if children are raised to become anti Semites, we shouldn't be afraid to take them away from their families. This is coming out of remarks made by representatives of Angela Merkel's Christian Democrats Party. Uh, they have a proposal on how to tackle anti Semitism. One of their proposals is that complete acceptance of the Jewish life is a criterion for successful integration. And what's interesting about this, and I get into this in the article today, they're using the the immigrant population of the country to to basically aim this at. They're aiming this, or they're pretending to aim this at the Muslim uh, population of the country, particularly since 2015, Germany took a million migrants in, and that hasn't sat well with German folks at all when times are hard. Don't flood the country with migrants, right? So that's how they're selling it, basically. That anti-Semites coming out of immigrant populations or immigrant areas represent a serious threat to the country. But of course, this is going to be rolled out for everybody. And it's an interesting story. It's on richieallen.co.uk. UK today if you want to have a look at it 17 minutes past the hour what else is on there and you might have seen that absolutely ridiculous story and I do laugh because these appear to be nonsensical stories and they appear to be very unimportant stories but they are important stories and this is the story about Derbyshire Constabulary Male Voice Choir so this is a male choir made up of Derbyshire police officers and have been told by the police force, by their authorities, they've got to change the name of the choir because they don't include women. The members of the choir are absolutely shocked at this. Chief Constable Peter Goodman told them that they had to become a mixed voice choir. So in response to that, all the men could do was to distance themselves from the force. Staggering this, maddening that the... The, the police authority has said, well, this is about gender equality. And one of the things they said was, they said that we're committed to being an equal opportunities employer and to having an organisation where there are no enclaves where people from different backgrounds cannot go. But this is crazy. Male voice choirs have a sound that is distinctive because it is male voices, right? And there are people who love male voice choirs. We know them, these people, that don't listen to popular rock, uh, traditional rock, classic rock, pop. They like male voice choirs. Sometimes they like female voice choirs. But it's absolutely unbelievable that as in the blink of an eye, they can say to these guys who've been not, well, not, not these guys particularly, but that choir has existed for 60 years and has earned nearly three quarters of a million pounds for charity. And in 60 years, no female, no woman, no lady, no police officer uh, said, you know, I'd love to join. Because women are not, women are not, I don't know a woman who would want to join a male voice choir. It's crazy. And it looks like a nothing story, but it's not a nothing story. And I said this today and I mean it. And I'll tell you why it's not a, not a nothing story. Because they want to, to change the paradigm to make this the norm, the new normal. Where it's normal for the state or the, the big pillars of the state, right, to be able to intervene and stop anything or change anything they like, excuse me, they don't like, in case it is offending a minority or it goes against gender equality or whatever. And that's basically a war on your freedom to speak, to think and to assemble in the manner with which you want to assemble. And this is getting progressively worse. These men have been singing in this choir for years. Apparently, they're very, very good 
and they're in demand under the banner of Derbyshire Constabulary. Now they can't have the Derbyshire Constabulary banner because of gender equality madness. And this is absolute fucking madness. And if it's not stopped, it's going to end up with a, a, a type of self-censorship, which is what they want to bring in. Crazy stuff, this.